In this video, we will discuss about various parts of the axial skeleton beginning with skull. Skull, also called as cranium, which is made up of 22 bones, it lies on the top of vertebral column. It is divided into two categories, cranial bones, which forms the cranial cavity, it consists of 8 bones, and facial bones, which forms the face, and it contains 14 bones. So now first in detail we will discuss about cranial bones. Eight bones that forms the cranial cavity are frontal bone, two parietal bones, two temporal bones, occipital bone, sphenoid bone and the ethmoid bone. Firstly the frontal bone. The frontal bone. It forms the anterior portion of the cranium which forms the forehead, orbital roof and maximum portion of anterior cranial floor. The right and left parts are fused soon after birth via metopic suture disappearing at the age of 6 to 8 years. Thickening of the frontal bones superior to the orbits forms the supraorbital margin. Frontal bone extends posteriorly from this margin and forms the floor of the cranial cavity. Within this margin, slightly medial to midpoint is a hole known as supraorbital foramen. When it remains incomplete, it's called supraorbital notch. Frontal sinuses are located deep below the frontal squama. Parietal bones, they are two in number and present on left and right side. It forms the larger part of the sides and roof of the cranial cavity. Internal surfaces have many protrusions and depressions which reside blood vessels supplying dura mater and connective tissue covering of the brain. Next, temporal bones. They are also two in number. It forms the inferior and lateral portions of the cranium and cranial floor. Temporal squama is the thin and flat portion forming the anterior and superior part of the temple. Along with this temporal squama, an extending inferior portion is called zygomatic process, forming a joint with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. They both form the zygomatic arc, a socket known as mandibular fossa is positioned on the inferior posterior surface of zygomatic process. Anterior to the mandibular fossa, articular tubercle, a rounded elevation is located. Both the mandibular fossa and articular tubercle forms joint with the mandibular known as temporomandibular joint. Mastoid portion is positioned posterior and inferior to the external auditory meatus, allowing the passage of sound waves to the ear. Mastoid process, it is a rounded projection of the mastoid portion. It is a point of attachment for various neck muscles. Internal auditory meatus a gateway for facial nerve and vestibulocochlear nerve. Styloid process at the inferior surface links up the muscles and ligaments of the tongue and neck. At the floor of the cranial cavity, the triangular part called the petrous portion is situated between the sphenoid and occipital bone which accommodates the internal ear and the middle ear. The fourth bone is the occipital bone. It forms the posterior and most of the base of cranium. Foramen magnum at the inferior part helps to connect medulla oblongata with spinal cord and the vertebral column. Occipital condyles, which are oval processes having convex surfaces on both sides of the foramen magnum, articulates with the depressions on the first cervical vertebrae, also known as atlas to form the atlanto-occipital joint. 
Above the occipital condyles on both sides, hypoglossal canal is located. A bump-like structure felt on the back of a head is the external occipital protuberance which is the most evident midline projection just above the foramen magnum. Large fibrous elastic ligament called the ligamentum nucae projects from the external occipital protuberance to the seventh cervical vertebrae. Two curved ridges extend laterally to form superior knuckle lines and two inferior knuckle lines lies below which provides space for muscle attachment. The next bone is sphenoid bone which is located at the middle part of the base of the skull. It forms important part of cranial floor as it articulates with all of the cranial bones keeping them together. It helps to join anteriorly with frontal bone, laterally with temporal bones and posteriorly with the occipital bone. Lies posterior and slightly superior to the nasal cavity and forms portions of the floor, side walls and rear walls of the orbit. The shape matches with that of a butterfly with stretched wings. Body, a hollow and cube-like structure, is a medial portion between the ethmoid and occipital bones. Inside space of body is called sphenoidal sinus, which drains into the nasal cavity. Cella turcica, a bony, saddle-shaped structure, lies on the superior surface of the body. Another part makes horn of the saddle, which is a ridge that is tuberculum cellae. Seat of the saddle is a depression known as hypophyseal fossa which locates the pituitary gland. Posterior part of cella turcica forms the back of the saddle and another ridge that is the dorsum cellae. Anterolateral floor of the cranium is formed by the greater wings of the sphenoid bone projecting literally from the body. Smaller ones, that is the smaller wings, which forms part in the cranial floor and posterior part of the eye, creates a ridge of bone anterior and superior to the greater wings. Optic foramen is located between the body and lesser wings just anterior to the cella turcica. Here, optic nerve and ophthalmic artery supplies the orbit. Laterally from the body of the greater wings and lesser wings, a triangular slit called superior orbital fissure is located which allows the passage of blood vessels and cranial nerves. The pterygoid process extending inferiorly from the point of attachment of body and greater wings forms a lateral posterior part of nasal cavity. At its base in the greater wings, foramen ovale is located. Pharyngeal arteries pass through foramen lacerum which is enclosed by a layer of fibrocartilage bounded anteriorly by a sphenoid bone and medially by occipital and sphenoid bone. One more that is Foramen rotundum is located at the junction of the medial and anterior portions of sphenoid bone through which the maxillary branch of trigeminal nerve passes. Now the next and the last bone of the skull is ethmoid bone. It looks like a sponge in appearance. It is located in midline in the anterior part of cranial floor medial to orbits. It is anterior to sphenoid and posterior to nasal bones. Ethmoid bone basically contributes in forming anterior portion of cranial floor, medial wall of orbits, superior portion of nasal septum. It plays an important role as a major superior supporting bone for nasal cavity. Cerebriform plate of ethmoid bone which is located at the anterior floor of the cranium forms the roof of the nasal cavity.
It contains the olfactory foramina which allows the passage of olfactory nerves. At the superior part, a triangular process called the crystal galley is located which is a point of attachment for membranes that separates brain into two sides, that is the left and right side. At the inferior side, a perpendicular plate is located occupying the superior portion of the nasal septum. Major portion of the nasal cavity and the orbits is composed of the lateral masses of ethmoid bone containing 3 to 18 air spaces which are known as ethmoidal cells and together they form ethmoidal sinuses. In the lateral masses, two thin scroll-shaped projections lying lateral to nasal septum called as superior nasal conchae or turbinate and the middle nasal conchae are present. The third pair that is the inferior nasal conchae are separate bones. Functions of the conchae are firstly to increase the vascular and mucous membrane surface area in the nasal cavity, provide warmth and moisture to the inhaled air before passing it to lungs. And lastly, they also cause inhaled air to swirl which helps to trap some of the inhaled particles in the mucous membrane of nasal cavity which allows in cleansing of the air prior to its passage to the lungs. Dance with me one more time. Click here to watch my previous video on Introduction to Human Skeleton System. <laughs>